today we are going to talk to Mr. Tula Sizogukize from the Department of Education. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good morning to you, sir. Uh, can you tell us how did you become a researcher? Hey, it's a very long story, but I will try and keep it short. Um, I, I, I graduated in, in 2012 and then uh, started working in 2013. For two years, uh, I was a teacher in one of the world areas in Kosherstein. And then uh, I started, you know, my life became a routine. Like in the morning, go to class, teaching them, and coming back and sleeping. And I thought to myself, no, this is not my life. This is not like I want actually for the rest of my life. So uh, with a group of um, three ladies, we decided to go back and, and, and pursue our postgraduate uh, studies in, 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 in KZN. Um, Every campus. Thank you so much. And then, what are you currently working on? Um, recently, I've been working a lot on my PhD as I was submitted in November. Um, and uh, I've just submitted my last three chapters, but they are still in review by my, my, my two supervisors. And um, I've been writing papers and notices for publishing. Of which um, I've, I've just completed my three master's papers on, on GIS, Geographic Information Systems, um, where I've been looking at um, Southern Advisor's role on, 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 on the implementation of GIS as well as teachers' roles, as well as how assessment is, is, is done in, in, in secondary schools with regards to GIS. And also, under my PhD, I've, 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 I've you know, I see great passes with five of them, of which two of them are other few. Thank you so much. And then, what role are uh, subject advisors play in schools? Um, you see, this thing started uh, actually with me becoming a lead educator um, in KZN, where I was a facilitator. Um, working with the advisor of geography, going and teaching uh, other educators how to implement a GIS. So their role is to actually facilitate programs which are aimed at enhancing the you know, teaching and learning process in schools so that you know, there is an effective teaching and learning going on in our schools for you know, improvement in the performance. So because they that understanding of GIS, that's when they recruited me to come in as a lead educator to try and share my ideas with our teachers so that we are able to facilitate this thing and try to you know, enhance the teaching of GIS because it is a problem, a, a problem in schools. So that's how I came in. Even here when I came in the free state, I've been working a lot with the advisor where I went um, in one of the places as, uh, around Warden where I was actually, you know, sharing my ideas of what I was doing in case of with regards to GIS because it's one of the very challenging topics in geography since it was introduced in 2006 in the curriculum. Thank you so much. And then, okay, we see that you are playing a role in the community. Mm -hmm. That's very uh, profound. And then, are there any gaps within your field of study? Exactly, because I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in geography, uh, particularly in GIS, as you have noticed. <laughs> yeah, so GIS uh, takes many terms. You know, when you look at international studies, they talk of geospatial technologies and, 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 and they talk of computer based GIS. And in our, aim, in our own education system, it's called you know, paper based GIS because of being a developing country. Um, if you look at uh, GIS, it started in the 1960s uh, by Dr. Roger Tomlinson, who was a geographer working for an European company. So he was able to design maps for the first time using computers, which was something that was new because um, actually GIS, um, I mean maps were, were designed in the past manually. So he was able to do it efficiently and they saw that there was a need for GIS education in schools. And then in Canada, that's where it started in the 1960s. And then European countries started adopting GIS. So, because our education system in South Africa is, is more of adopting the way Europeans are, you know, 
the higher education system is. However, remember we are a developing country. So now is being the company that is in charge of GI as they said. How about we actually design something which is an alternative to GIS? Instead of learners in South Africa learning with GIS, sitting in front of a computer, playing with all of those technologies like remote sensing, attribute data, they actually learn about GIS, where these uh, technologies are actually in, in, in the textbook. And then it shall say, how do you as a GIS specialist use this term of maybe remote sensing to do once we're introducing other forms of the topographic maps? So that's where the gap is to say there are not so many studies uh, in South Africa that teach about GIS, and also we are lacking fundamental resources, which is computers and ICT information communication technologies in our schools, which is why then I come in and then try to write a lot about GIS so that you know I try and find solutions in education to GIS. Uh, is it possible that in future can we see GIS? being put into our our languages, our official languages? Uh, it's difficult and it's, it's a wonderful uh, question. You know, um, actually at the moment uh, we are writing two papers on, on language in GIS because when you look at GIS, uh, it's very tiny technological when you look at the concepts which are there. And when you look at the, 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 the quality of teachers were having in our schools. These teachers, some of them were there long before GIS was introduced in our schools. Some of them are unable to even operate computers, yet they are expected to teach this GIS, which is why then it becomes a problem. So in those two papers, we are actually looking at how about we just, you know, use code switching and be able to, you know, try to, to, to teach GIS. But before we do that, we need to actually look at the problems, which is this GIS terms being a problem and, 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 and try to, to find the problem through maybe teacher's perceptions or, or learner's perceptions and so on, so that you know exactly where the problem is with the language. But as for the language we used in our official languages, it would be a very, very challenging job because of how, you know, the funds and, 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 and so on. But it would be a very, very good thing to do as we are trying to propose to papers based on exactly trying to use our own languages in teaching. Thank you so much. And then what message can you share with aspiring researchers? Um, hey, um, you see, um, this thing is not about you being smart, research is not about all that. You can be smart you know, to find easy ways of doing certain things, but there are no shortcuts there. Hard work, uh, you need to be you know, consistent. You know, I come in the office almost every day at 6 o'clock in the morning. And then when I leave, I'm not sure what time I leave, because sometimes when I want to leave, then there will be something that I want to write. And even when I'm, you know, sleeping, I want to wake up and, and actually write something before I fall I actually forget it. So I would say hard work, um, be consistent in what you do. If, if, I, if, I, if, I, if today I wake up at, at, at half past four, get ready for work, tomorrow I should do the same thing. You know, resilience as well. And be patient because sometimes you give you feedback by your supervisors and you think, no, I should just put this thing aside and see it some other time. But you need to be able to, you know, develop that strength of, of actually taking critique and, and, and then working on it to better your work. Thank you so much. And uh, Mr. Mkise, uh, coming back to your work, is there any perspective or school of thought that influence your writing? Mm, with regards to schools of thought, um, it's more of, you know, framings. Uh, um, you know, I like, when I was doing my master's, I, I, I like that there is a framework of a unified deal of a sentence and use of technology, as well as TPEC. Uh, at the moment I'm working with TPEC, uh, looking at technology alone, pedagogical approaches, pedagogical content knowledge. And all of that, um, it, 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 in a way, gives me a perspective on angle to, to approach my work and, and, and be better at what I do. And also, there are scholars like Fishman, Fatih Festesen, you know, Muswaka, and others, you know, Tarasai and so on, 
they write a lot on Shadows, and, and that's where you know I get to see, you know, what is it that has been said by the previous scholars and what is it that they're not saying, and then I try to you know to contribute uh, on what they're not saying in order for my work to be unique. Thank you so much. And then, apart from research, are there any interests on your side? Uh, apart from research, I like cooking. <laughs> I like cooking a lot. Uh, I like being alone. But yet, uh, I find myself in between people. But I like, I actually like my, my time to be alone. And um, yeah, it's just uh, cooking and being alone. But, uh, all these you know, times get calls from people to say, can you come around and can you do this, can you do that? But at times, I, I struggle for, for me to, to focus on the same things and reflect on myself. I thank you so much for your time, Mr. Nikizi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. Thanks. Yes. <laughs>